Okay, sorry for, for the delay. I covered the first. You're all welcome to this special break from the spokesperson, Dr. Mike Lima. He's also substituted second time for indigenization and economic empowerment to the political. Today, we are the jacket of the acting spokesperson of the party. We welcome you all, and once again, my apologies for the slight delay in commencing. For that and other reasons, I will therefore not waste much of the time than to leave the, this opportunity 
to the Airfield spokesperson. Seek any clarifications as the case may be on any other matters related to the party. So, over to you, uh, Comrade Action Spokesperson. The media is where to be able to. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Director uh, Comrade Mugwadi. Just to say good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I just want to I really apologize for, for the late start, but as you are aware, as we get towards the end of the year, there are so many programs running parallel, and therefore I just want to, to apologize that uh, this, this uh, press conference would have started earlier on. Having said that, uh, I have a couple of things that I just wanted to put across. Firstly, is the preparations uh, towards the hosting of the, our annual conference, which this year will be in Marshonaland Central in Bindura. But this time it's a different type of conference, really as a result of the pandemic. Uh, this time around, things will be different. There will be the conference in Bindura, and there will also be gathering at the various 10 provinces. So we are actually talking about a virtual conference this time around. The Politburo and some members of the Central Committee and the NCA will be gathered in Bindura where events will be held centrally and we'll also have the participation of the other delegates at their various centers in the provinces. I'm happy to report that uh, preparations have gone well, and uh, we can safely say that uh, as of now, the preparations are of really at 90% complete. We have various subcommittees working on various aspects in terms of preparations from transport and welfare, legal and documentation, information and publicity, health, etc. And we continue to fine tune these preparations so that we are all fully prepared in the nearest possible time. Our theme this year is growing and modernizing the economy towards Vision 2030. And there's a lot of interest and excitement from our delegates in the provinces in terms of the deliberations this year. And we believe that this will be, again, a very successful conference. I'd like to touch on Another issue which I think is very important in the sense of just thanking 
our exhibitors, both national and international, who participated at this year Zimbabwe International Trade Fair. Despite the pandemic, there was a big turnout from the public and from the private sector. Bear in mind that the private sector was affected adversely by the pandemic in terms of the lockdowns and the other disturbances associated with the pandemic. But I think industry came in full force and participated fully. The quality of the stands was very high and really matched even the standards exhibited by our international guests. On the second day of the of ZITF, we had the International Business Conference, which was graced by the Vice President, Comrade Chiwenga. There was a full participation of the entire cabinet that was present either to make deliberations and also to hear the presentation from the private sector. There was also wide presentation by the private sector representing big companies, small companies, SMEs, as well as the informal sector. And discussions were very frank and open and I think the nation benefited from that interaction. And I would like to believe that going forward, we should, should, we should see more and more of the interface between the private sector and government. Because while we talk about the growing, growing of our economy, it is really the private sector that drives our economy when government stands to create a conducive environment for that to happen. And I'm sure you will agree with me that up to now government has done quite a lot to create that conducive environment for business to thrive in terms of policies that really affect the ease of doing business as well as the cost of doing business. If you attended ZITF, you will also agree with me that the ZANPF stand was probably one of the best in years. And the fact that they won a prize is no mean achievement. And I would like to thank all the departments here at head office for the amount of time and effort that they spent in the preparation towards ZITF. But what was also of interest was the interest of the public in joining Zanupia. We had a stand where members of the public had to come up, complete forms, and be issued with membership cards. The response was so overwhelming that the staff that we had put there were unable to cope. And we ended up having that setup transferred to the Davis Hall so that they could continue with the people joining for membership. And obviously, we would want to follow this up 
in, in other provinces. So it was something that we had never expected. I also want to talk about the, the issue of the rapporteur. We, we welcome the special visit from the UN Special Rapporteur, Mrs. Alena Dulan, who is coming to interact with our people in government to unpack the dis disastrous effects of sanctions that we have been talking about for some time. ZANU-PF is fully convinced that the Special Rapporteur will be able to witness and uncover how these sanctions have been causing untold suffering to our people as well as to government and business. We had never received a Special Rapporteur on sanctions from the global body as a country since the illegal sanctions were imposed. But today we express our gratitude and a warm welcome to the Special Rapporteur as she prepares to come to our beautiful and peace-loving nation. Notwithstanding unyielding efforts of the Second Republic under the leadership of our visionary leader, His Excellency, the President, Comrade E.D. Mnangava, we strongly hold that without sanctions, we can double our efforts in turning around our economy. We are proud to be one of the fastest growing economy in the southern region, despite the illegal sanctions. We are harvesting the results of hard work, servant leadership, and people-centered policies of the new dispensation. Was also going to touch on the issue of empowerment. The, there has been some confusion as to whether the new dispensation is driving the empowerment trust or whether it's backpedaling. And as a party, we are on record on saying that ZANU-PF strongly believes that our people are responsible for driving our economy in various forms. And that while we no longer subscribe to the setting of a threshold in terms of 5149 shareholding towards indigenization, we still believe as a party that the empowerment of our people is the only way to move forward. So the Department of Indigenization and Economic Empowerment continues to roll out the approved 
revised policy on indigenization and economic empowerment. And we do this in partnership with all other organizations that subscribe to empowerment. Our first port of call was in Mlawai, where we had a meeting with the business fraternity in that area. At that meeting, we partnered with the empowerment group and uh, it was a very big success in terms of people appreciating the elements contained in the policy. The affirmative action group which we partnered as we rolled out the policy in Blawayo, also had an opportunity to set up structures in that area because of the overwhelming response. Our next port of call was in Midlands, where we had a meeting that was held in Kwekwe. This time around, we partnered with an organization called BIF, which stands for Business Economic Empowerment Forum. Again, this meeting was well attended, and we continue to re receive calls from business people in that area who want assistance. We have also of late witnessed a number of other organizations that have come up, but with a focus on empowerment. There is a new group calling itself Action Group on Empowerment which are really business people in our country, but who are more focused on empowerment at grassroots level. We welcome this. We have also witnessed young professionals, mainly women, coming together and again focusing on empowerment and the, the participation of professionals in, in the economy. So we do as a party want to support this and we'll do the best we can in order to work with these different groupings and to do the best we can to support them in the empowerment drive. That's all I wanted to share with you this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Comrade Deputy Spokesperson. Uh, can we hear from our colleagues from the media? It's your time to probe the spokesperson, to engage him on the issues raised among any other issues that are of public or concern to your, yourselves, the opportunity, my colleague. Yes, my dear sir. My name is Annette Chikam from the News and Other Day Report. Uh, my question is in connection with the issue of empowerment. Uh, you talked about empowering there's been a call on the part
discussed uh, today about youth complaining that issues to do with uh, employment are not being handled properly. For example, if there is money that is put into a bank, it's difficult for women. I can give an example of the women's bank. Uh, there's demand for collateral, and most women are poor. They cannot afford. So it means uh, the majority of women and youths, they are not benefiting from those employment programs that you're talking about. How are you working as a party, the ruling uh, uh, party, uh, working with government officials to make sure that the policies that are put by government up front work hand, hand in hand with uh, your policies as a party so that everyone benefits and not only a few people? That's my question. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Very good question. Uh, let me state from the outset that um, as a party, we have put together what we believe should constitute our approach to empowerment. And because we are the ruling party, we expect government to take up this this party approach into their activities. I'm happy though to say 90% of what you find in the revised policy, you can also find the same in the National Development Strategy 1, although not arranged in the same order. So the biggest implementer of our policy is actually government. And you are right in, in that we have to work closely with them to make sure that these policies are implemented. Now that we have a policy in place, our role is now more of monitoring and evaluating the implementation so that we can then go to government and say, you are not doing enough. This area is, not, is still lagging behind. The issue of, of funding, is also dealt with in this in our revised policy. In the revised policy, we are saying we would want to utilize the existing facilities, financial institutions, commercial banks, the Empower Bank, the, the Women's Bank, in terms of implementing the programs for the youth, for the women, and for the various groups. But in addition, we are also advocating for an empowerment fund so that this fund can be used in areas where these institutions are not able to, 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 to give service to. But interestingly, I've been in touch with the people who are running the Empower Bank and the, and the, and the Women's Bank, and I've expressed the issues that we have expressed issues of collateral, and, and they are very much aware of that, and they are now talking of basing loans on the basis of the viability of a project, which then turns out in the, in the fact that when people talk about projects, we also want to make sure that these projects are bankable. These are projects which can be funded and which can pay for themselves. So the issue is, don't just give money, but where money is given, there must be a corresponding support to make sure that the project succeeds. And obviously, much of the, thr the, thrust, the, thr the thrust in our revised policy is towards women and towards the youth. And it's more of wanting them really to, to, to participate in all the various sectors of our economy, be it mining, agriculture, manufacturing, tourism, what have you, so that we, we, they have to fully participate. And we know in any business, there's no business that you can go into which doesn't require funding. You need 
because we, we are in business because we want to make money, but you need money to make more money. And, but it's also an issue of making sure that these funds are properly utilized. And that is the support that we would want, we want to give. We have also, in, in the policy, in, in our revised policy, we are also talking about putting up a database of mentors we have a number of professionals, even people who have retired, but we have got a lot of experience which they would want to share with young people going into business, with women going into business. Because business is, is, is not something that you just dream. There are certain skills and expertise that you need to make sure that your project succeeds. And, and, and we, are, we are in the process of establishing a database of mentors who then support these people who go into project so that they succeed. Once they succeed, they are able to pay back their loans. Once they are prepared, once they pay their loans, they are also in a position to get more loans and even grow their projects and grow companies so that we can see even small companies becoming big companies tomorrow. So the, the, that whole issue is very much catered for. But as, as you rightly say, there is more to it that we have to do in terms of making sure that these facilities that are there are there to benefit the people who need them most. Because in the end, you end up with probably people who have done well, who are only the people who can access those loans because probably they have got houses, they have got properties, and they can be able to offer uh, collateral on their loans. But what we want is to make sure that those people who don't have those properties, those who don't have uh, houses, can still access these lands and, 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 and these loans. So it's an issue that, that I think is a very really live one and in an issue that I think is very important for all of us to, to try and assist those who want to, to borrow money and come out with viable projects. Thank you. Yes, that's it. Um, thank you. Victory spokesperson, I just wanted to find out um, what, what do you hope will be achieved by the visit of the UN rapporteur, um, especially if the issues that those who have imposed the sanctions uh, are still outstanding. Do you think that anything useful is going to come out of it? Well, we, our position as a party has been that um, we are very much aware of the very reason why we have sanctions. Unfortunately, in some sectors, people have come out with various reasons to justify these sanctions. But I think the voice that has been coming from SADAC, the voice coming from the African Union. And these voices tell a story that there's something that is not right. And you and I know that the decision get back our land was really the beginning of this war that we are talking about. And that land, we were not, we didn't steal land. We we're getting the land that has been stolen from us. And we know the whole issues to do with the land issue, to do with the Lancaster conference, to do with uh, certain undertakings that were not fulfilled. So there are those who still believe strongly that we shouldn't have gone that path. But I think as Zimbabweans, not just as Zanopia, as Zimbabweans, through the constitution, that was arrived at through consultations where we are saying 
the land issue is irreversible. So that issue is not a party issue, it's a national issue, that the land issue is done. And that the focus now is more on issues to do with production, issues to do with productivity, which, which I think the government is doing uh, a lot in terms of addressing. So our chance is if people come and want to hear us, we will tell them. We will continue to say what we have said in the past. And one hopes that in the process, some will listen. But we also know that there are others who will never listen. But the issue is that we continue to move forward. And we are also saying that, look, sanctions or no sanctions, we have a direction. We know where we are going. And that's what we should, as a nation, focus on. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Comrade Director. My name is Josiah Mbunini, in particular, TV. Um, honorable spokesperson, I want to write down a list of three questions so that we can take them all at once. The first one is to do with the um, approaching rain season. Uh, I hear there are concerns out there, especially in my own area in Kumbu, there, where if it's annotated there, Kumbuza provincial English scheme is not on the ground as yet. What is the party's position in terms of uh, preparedness for this year's agricultural season? That's question number one. Number two, I understand that uh, the party will be holding its uh, National People's Conference starting from the 25th of October, if I'm not mistaken. But I also know that uh, that is the, the date that is set aside by study for the commemorations of uh, the sanctions on Zimbabwe. What activities and preparations are there as a party and nationally to commemorate and voice uh, concern over these sanctions? Question number three is to do with the current hyperinflationary era that we are getting into as a country. Uh, we have witnessed the indiscipline in the economy where people are abusing foreign currency and causing exchange rates to go up and resulting in prices of commodities going up, making life difficult for the people of Zimbabwe. I'm happy that you alluded to the fact that the party informs government position. What is the position right now concerning that rampant indiscipline in the economy at the moment? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. The, we had a successful agricultural season last year and um, much to do with very good rains, thank God for that, but also to do with the various programs that had been initiated. And you are right in, um, in singling Kumbuza is one of those. It was a very huge success and as a party, we would want to see probably even a better season than last year. Given the fact that people now have the experience of Kumbuza, they have learned their mistakes, if they had any, and they have consulted to those who have the expertise to improve on what they did last year. I pray that we also get another bumper rainy season. And I think as a party, we have welcomed the idea in which government has even extended the Pumbudza concept 
to other crops, to cotton, to horticulture, which again is an indication that once you have a winning formula, you want to continue with that formula. There has been quite a lot of preparations in terms of inputs. But like in anything, you might find that there's one pocket or two pockets where you find that there could be challenges. But I would like to believe that the input distribution this year will be better than last year. But admittedly, there could be one area or two areas. And, and, thing, and I'm sure once these are brought uh, to the attention of the authorities, these issues will be addressed. And as a party, we are, in, we are encouraging our membership to take advantage of, of these programs and to put, participate fully in these programs so that we, we, they make their own contribution in terms of uh, growing our economy. Your second question was to do with the, the dates for the conference and also the dates which were set aside by, the, by our regional grouping for the calling uh, of the removal of sanctions. The, just to correct you that the conference will be held between the 28th and the 30th of October. And um, you probably you have missed that we have already started a lot of activities towards that date. The calling of the removal of sanctions is not just for the 25th we have already started doing so, a lot of activities uh, which will culminate towards the 25th and even beyond. So there is no, there is no clash as, we, as it were, there is actually complementarity. The, your third and last question was on the issues to do with forex, foreign currency, to do with the exchange rate, to do with what has been coming up um, in terms of um, people who have been brought to book, in terms of illegal dealings, in terms of forex. The, as a party, we, we have been advocating for stability in terms of foreign currency exchange. We've been advocating for stability in terms of our currency. And we were glad that the ministry responsible for finance, as well as the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, had moved quite remarkably in addressing some of these issues. But a couple of weeks ago, we then found ourselves that the monster was coming in and disrupting what we thought was now It's smooth sailing type of affairs. But when these things happen, it's not for one person, it's not just for the government, it's not just for the Reserve Bank government, it's not just for the Minister of Finance. Because you require a holistic solution to it. Therefore, any holistic solution to it requires the participation of all concerned. 
And I'm happy to, to have witnessed the meetings that were held with the various stakeholders, with the industrialists, with the retailers, with a number of institutions and organizations that play a part in these issues. And that there was some common ground that was reached in terms of a number of activities that the various players have to engage themselves in. There is an undertaking from the Reserve Bank in terms of what they are going to be doing and also from the various business organizations and would like to support them that these interactions should continue, that interface must continue, the sharing of ideas must continue. And we believe if we all put our heads together, we will succeed. We have succeed, succeeded in the past. There's nothing to stop us from succeeding going forward as, lo as long as we put our heads together. Thank you. That was the final question, right? Okay. Uh -huh. Not yet, please. Uh, my question concerns uh, the violence that took to place <laughs> in Mashindi School um, a few days ago. Uh, it is alleged that uh, uh, opposition leader Nelson Chamisa was attacked. So I'm asking a Zanupia spokesperson, uh, it, it's like the country is in an election mode from day one to win your election for the five years that, that we are in power. Are there no solutions to do with issues worthy of this case in terms of elections and all that, so that as a party and as government... No, sorry, before the, the spokesperson uh, responds, mm -hmm. I would ask you to request probably your question for the benefit of him particularly because you appear to have said our opposition spokesman, our opposition leader. We do not have an opposition leader in this building. Oh, okay. Uh, the country's that's opposition not our... leader. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the opposition leader in the country, Nelson Chamisa, alleges that he was attacked in Mashin a few days ago. So my question is, this issue of violence, since it has been going on, uh, ever since elections were held, and this will continue right as we have another election in 2023. As a part, as ZANU PF, we are the ruling party. Don't you think there are other solutions that can help your, your party members or your leadership to concentrate on development for the country than to have these Mickey Mouse issues that will derail, that will also disturb? even your, 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 your future as, 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 as a party. Okay. Yes. I, I heard you. I'll answer you in a very, probably in a very indirect way. I think we have experienced lot of success stories since the coming on, coming in of the new dispensation. I think if you look at issues to do with infrastructure, you see roads being attended to, you have experienced dams being completed, being commissioned. You have seen, despite the pandemic, 
we've seen quite a lot of success stories. The issues to do with on the education front, issues to do with innovations, inventions coming up, the issue of capacity utilization going up in industry, which has been an issue that has been a problem for this country for some time. And you see the gradual increase of capacity utilization, which is an indication of, of business-friendly policies, and which also tells you about the confidence that the business people have in the country. And the investors coming in, again, as a show of confidence. Now, if we were putting all our time into fights, we wouldn't have seen this remarkable progress, which I think you also appreciate. So if one puts all these successes, the conclusion is that as a party and as a government, we are putting more of our time on development rather than fight. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Comrade. In this of my sister, we took my heart in the command in the face of the family man in my community in Chatham. But of course, I would hear it is not our duty to create space for you or even for you to get in. We don't provide political consultants to opposition political parties in whatever their process are. So don't impose yourself on a people and then they. Try to force them as your audience. And when they say, no, we don't want to hear your nonsense, you then want to, to label those things on us. On top of that, I think, Chef, you are aware, these things, these theatrics started the day it was announced that the special rapporteur will be coming to Zimbabwe. Before that, we were leaving peacefully, no demonstration, until, uh, until the last stage managed to take up the action by those girls. There was no other thing any, anymore. Until when it was said the special rapporteur of the test to this country, we saw flash demonstrations in the office. Now, so much. Anyway, I don't want to waste my time. Thank you very much. For Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so the Dutch people knew I knew that's not why it's okay.